About three months ago, I bought the 2019 Felt Compulsion 3, and while I'm still in the early stages of my experience with it, I feel as though I've put enough kilometers on it to have a good idea of what I like, what I don't like, and what I personally would change or am going to change to make this the perfect bike for me. Starting with the basics, the Felt Compulsion is a long travel carbon fiber enduro bike with modern geometry and 27.5 inch wheels. The bike retails for around $52.99 Canadian and I got it in the size small. I'm quite short at around 5 foot 4 and the bike seems to fit me quite well but I'm not sure how it sizes up. The Compulsion features a fully carbon frame including the rear triangle and rocker lengths with 165mm of travel in the rear and it weighed around 34 pounds out of the box. But since going tubeless, it weighs in at around 33 pounds with pedals. One of this bike's most striking features is its suspension design. Felt's patented Equilink design is described as a six bar linkage, which connects the upper and lower links with a bar called the Equilink. This allows the rotation of the upper and lower links to be tuned independently, optimizing both leverage and anti-squat curves, as opposed to the 4-bar linkages system where the tuning of anti-squat is bound to one of these links and the leverage curve to another. By doing this, Equilink allows a platform that provides progressive suspension travel, positive pedaling support, as well as limiting pedal kickback on hard compressions. Pair all of that with a Fox DPX2 performance in the rear, and a Fox 36 performance fork in the front, and we get a very positive suspension spec. In the drivetrain, we get a full NX Eagle setup from SRAM, and an NX crankset paired with the Truvative power supply and bottom bracket. Cockpit components are handled by Felt's house brand D-Box, and we see 800mm wide bars, small and medium frame comes with a 45mm stem, and extra large and large sees a 55mm stem. For the wheels, we see WTB STP i29 rims laced onto a lower end set of unbranded hubs, finished off with Maxxis Minion DHFs front and back, and the wheel sets are tubeless ready out of the box. The small and medium frame comes with a 100mm KS E10 dropper post, where the large and extra large comes with the same post but only 125mm. For the brakes, we see Shimano's dual piston MT500 hydraulic disc sets on both the front and rear of the bike, paired with a set of 180mm Shimano center lock rotors. Now the real question, how does it ride? Starting with the climbing. Felt claims that the Equilink design significantly helps the climbing properties of the bike, and I can confirm that it pedals fast and efficiently. The anti-squat characteristics that Felt claims are noticeable straight away. On the climbs is where I'd say if anywhere I feel the carbon is pulling its weight. The solid frame construction feels very stiff and the bike responds confidently with every pedal stroke, which provides an effortless riding experience. On the descents, it handles very confidently. The suspension design aids in this by providing lots of support mid-stroke, as well as preventing harsh bottom outs. I find the bike responds really well when you dig in the extra little bit to push it hard through technical sections and carry momentum, and it feels very stable under hard compressions or G-outs. I have encountered many scenarios where my old bike would tend to feel unsettled and duck rather hard into the bottom end of its travel, but the convulsion seems to handle these moments with ease and seems to react very well when you can open the brakes and will yourself to push it through these moments. The bike is really playful and likes to stay light on the front end and is pleasantly easy to handle through tight switchbacks and hairpin turns. As far as the negatives, I'm not overly fond of the brakes that came on the bike, but I was expecting this before I got it, and I'm looking to upgrade these soon. In addition to this, I ended up with a defective derailleur that can't take full advantage of the lowest gear, as it can't shift back out of the gear once it's in it. Mostly these are relatively small complaints, but they all add up in the early stages of bike ownership to provide a mad memory of how long it took to feel like the bike was truly ride ready, and it should be noted. Ultimately it's clear what Felt was going for with this bike. A quality budget friendly carbon fiber enduro bike built up with solid component spec as well as decent room for growth and upgrades of the rider's choice. Even despite its few shortcomings, I firmly believe that this bike knows exactly what it is and who it is for, and I wouldn't hesitate to say that it has to be mentioned as one of the best value bikes out there right now, and it gets me excited to ride my bike every single time and I can't wait to put more laps on it.
<laughs> the redneck way. <laughs>